This is absolutely unbelievable. Rook takes it now. Yes, she does. She takes the knight off. This is brilliant chess. And now Rook takes bishop. Bishop takes d4 is a huge possibility here. Or you can try to complicate things with maybe rook f1. Does. Takes, takes, king g7. Now king e3 is excellent. Goes free. Check. King goes up. Five seconds, four seconds, three, two. Only one second left. Seven seconds and 20. She makes some air for the king, not allowing any potential mates. G3 has yeah, really, really long time. And now with the rook trade, the game is completely over. Lina trades rooks and she will get an extra queen on, on B1. And now it's just a matter of uh, technique. A couple of checks still remain for white, but unfortunately for chessboard, this position is beyond hopeless. And there's no way that Lina will not be able to convert this. And she has 16 seconds versus 7. She's just shaking her head, but she's got to move, and she does. Moves the queen to d3, rook to f2. Goes for a check, king to h2. Let's see if she can find a way to mate. She has to move those 9, 8 seconds. She sees it. She's panicking a little bit, but she just goes for a move. She finds queen f5, 7 seconds, though. Both pairs really playing on her increment g4, and yet now it's completely over. Queen check. Queen to h1, rook h2, queen h2, checkmate. And Lina is the first finalist. What a match. So yeah, Lina, the first finalist of the Real Chess League Season 2. Who will she face? You'll see in the next episode. This position is is absolutely dire for black because these pawns on b3 and f3 are doing such a good job. Decides to come to the sixth instead. Rook c6, knight b5, no bother. You can protect that d4 pawn in many ways. You can even exchange the rooks off first, which is what he does. Takes, takes, king g7. Now king e3 is excellent. Just protecting that pawn. And black's knights just aren't working. Decides to play the move. Uh, knight to d7 but this should not be enough a4 is excellent kicking the knight now you can't even go knight to d6 he goes knight to b6 just about holding on for the moment but any move here is going to be good rook to b8 rook to b7 looks extremely natural to my eyes he goes rook to c6 also good now knight to a3 now this knight is actually stuck on the rim so that knight isn't escaping anytime soon Decides to push a5, knight to d7. Now anything rings, rook c7. Even knight takes e6 check straight away is very, very good. And he does that. F, yeah, and the point is f takes e6, rook c7 is going to be good. And black is in, uh, yeah, a completely lost position. f4 check doesn't do anything. You can just take it. Decides to go king d3, knight b5, holding on just for the moment. You can take the pawn on h7. Rook b7, a6, okay, now just take... Or you can take the knight like this. This is a very nice finish. Very, very well done by Marco. And the pawn queens and uh, Adrian should be resigning here. Uh, I don't know quite why he's playing on. If he's playing on till checkmate, uh, an extra queen is going to be sufficient for victory here. Probably just playing on until mate, which is nice and checkmate is on the board. Very, very well done by Marco. Uh, pretty flawless game, actually. Everything he did, he did in flow.
So he goes back queen d3 and also keeping an eye on f1. Well, now the rook can probably go to f1 and in some cases maybe back in the bishop up. Whoa, and look at the reaction there. He did not like his move at all. d4 is now on the board, which actually opens the diagonal for the queen there. But the queen probably wants to stay around the king because the dark squares are extremely weak where things can happen on that file, and especially with the rook occupying the c file. Nothing's really helping out the king besides the queen. Bishop takes d4 is a huge possibility here, or you can try to complicate things things with maybe rook f1 or moving the queen even to g3 or d2 maybe trying to take over the dark squares as much as possible but you want to find the strongest and most accurate or most annoying move for your opponent let's see what that is And he goes for rook f1 and she was slightly surprised there eyes kind of bulged a little bit there reaches for the pawn and takes it and queen f3 responds immediately with queen f6 now being the move and remember queen f7 was the response last time but now that would be a fatal error and now she's under 20 seconds in fact under 15 now under 10 10 seconds here on the clock seven six five four three two and she makes a move with two seconds on the clock in fact there is increment so she gets those two seconds right back of course uh now queen uh, over to b7 oh and mate is on the board she hung mates wow queen f3 queen e6 queen takes b7 rookie eight queen g7 mates wow what a game oh my <laughs>she's seen everything maybe she's seen everything knight takes rook in the corner okay and if rook takes knight then bishop takes the knight on f6 and suddenly this rook on a3 which was doing nothing for the most of this opening suddenly has got a function 
This is absolutely unbelievable. Rook takes it now. Yes, she does. She takes the knight off. This is brilliant chess. And now Rook takes bishop. And now all of a sudden, well, now this pawn comes up on b2. And actually, the position is incredibly unclear. What a, a series of trades and attacks. That's absolutely unbelievable. And now we reach this position here. Well, let's take stock. White has got the extra exchange, as we say. He's got a rook for a bishop. But black, in, ret in return, has got a bishop and a pawn for the rook. But it's not just any pawn. It's this A pawn on A5, which is ready to just run down the board if you're not careful and with the bishop sitting on that long diagonal it's actually a very dangerous pawn because the pawn might just run to the very end my gut feeling here tells me that black should not have any particular issues in this position as we could see the time we've got chess born two minutes 48 orca chess just around the five minute mark so the time is getting short for both of these players I'm very curious to see what will happen. Instinctively, it feels as though it should be around equal. Bishop e5, lovely little move here by Orca Chess, centralizing that black bishop, which is uh, absolutely essential. And Angelica aka chessborn she's got a real task because it's not just the a pawn it's the c pawn as well which is absolutely uh difficult to stop and that's what she does she stops it uh with the move rook to c2 okay now over to orca chess again decides to actually activate the rook rook b8 threaten a nasty little checkmate idea uh, and activate the rook i i like this move Oh no! Rook to a3, what is this? She completely missed it. She completely missed the checkmate. And it's going to be checkmate. I can't believe it. She has to give up the rook. And rook takes rook. And it is actually checkmate. Chessborn knocking over her king. Accepting resignation. And what a let off there for Orca Chess. I mean... Had she just given some luft for for that king, we would have had a, a, a real tough battle with many, many moves to come. But just a simple one move mistake, not protecting her back rank, and it is Orca Chess that wins. You can see them now discussing the game. Uh, this is a very common thing to do after a chess game and uh, smiles all around. It was a very, very tense affair, very, very close game as well. Uh, however, it is uh, Orca Chess, the, Ger the young German who wins the game against the very popular chess-born streamer Angelica from the Ukraine, uh, nicely discussing the game. Uh, obviously very disappointed to have lost like that and uh, both up you can see it in the way they're talking uh, very very uh, clearly uh, understanding that the game was very very level very very close battle but just one mistake can can make the difference and that is all for today. Congratulations to Orca Chess. And there'll be plenty more exciting chess to come.